so I'm in the book of Jonah, and uh, I usually read through the scriptures, and I get to the end, and then start again, and go back and forth, and back and forth, and I've done that for the better part of ten years. So, uh, I, we're at Jonah now, and I figured it's actually a rather short story, and some of you probably haven't read it, uh, so I figured I would read it for you. And when I read the word LORD in all capitals like that, if you flip to the preface, uh, the preface of your, your Bible, if you have one, you'd see that uh, they're referring to the Tetragrammaton, the four-letter letter Hebrew name for the Hebrew uh, deity, which was uh, horribly translated to Jehovah. The Hebrew letters are yod Hey wow Hey or vav Hey yod Hey vav Hey uh, y h w h loosely translated into English, so people get the word, yeah, the name Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yah, Hallelujah, come from that. So, you can hear a few different things in your head when I read the word Lord, but for confusion's sake, I'll just read the word uh, Lord. One of the many uh, things we have, thanks to the translators uh, of this particular version, which is a New American Standard Version placed by the Gideons. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was that mighty tempest on the sea. There was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. And they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? And what is your country, and of what people are you? So he said to them, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear Yahuwah, the Elohim of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of Yahuwah, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do that you uh, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempe tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, in all capitals, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with your with innocent blood for you, O, o capitals, all Lord. <laughs> for you, O Lord, have done as you pleased as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and where are we here? So they picked up Jonah and so they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. 
Then Jonah prayed to Yahuwah from his Elohim, from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to Yahuwah because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The water surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever, yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered Yahuwah, and my prayer went up to you in your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of Yahuwah. Uh, yeah. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited jo Jonah out onto dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a great, was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk, and then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. The word came to the king of Nineveh, and he rose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil ways way and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them he did not do it but it displeased Jonah gr Jonah exceedingly and he became angry so he prayed to the Lord and said ah Lord was this not what I said when I was still in my country therefore I fled previously to Tarshish for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness one who relents from doing harm therefore now O Lord please take my life from me for it is better for me to die than to live then the Lord said is it right for you to be angry so Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade until he might see what become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might make might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned on the next day, God prepared a worm. And so Damage, and it so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, Is it right for me to be angry? It is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, You have had pity on this plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night and should I not pity Nineveh that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and much livestock and so that is the story of Jonah